Good morning, Carbinis RJ, back with another video. So let's get to it. Today's random Mike Schmidt item of the day. Actually, two items from 1984 and 1985. The top tops rub downs. These were actually individually packaged items. They had their own little packs, and you would get these and what they are, like they said. Um, these things are transferable. If you laid this, there's a, there's a piece of tissue paper on the back. But if you laid this image on the on a piece of paper and then rubbed down with a coin or your finger or something, you would transfer this sticker to a sheet of paper. And this was really big when we were kids uh, in the late 80s. There was a lot of people doing this. They would sell you stickers of some uh, some movie television show kids programs sports any any interest you had they'd sell you these this kit it was a background made for your your um interest along with stickers that went along and you would put them rub them down on the uh, background image and have lots of fun create a piece of artwork for example uh, they did it only two years in 1984 and you can see by the copyright date and then 1985, they did it a second time. Now, a lot of this, a lot of these are exactly the same. So, like, there's very little difference between the uh, 84 and 85 Schmidt one, except for the two guys on the side were slightly different. All right, and the um, it's impossible to tell which one's which unless you look at the copyright date. So, if you're ever a collector of these, and you want to buy them, you see them, and you want to know which one you have. Just look at the copyright date because that is accurate, all right? Um, it's interesting that these were printed in Italy. Uh, a company called Panini in Italy printed these. I think that's how they got into the business, and you, they are Panini today. Uh, they did the these little rubdowns. They did the tops stickers all those years. That's how Panini got into the baseball card business, I suppose, with their relationship with tops, doing little things like that. Today's random baseball item of the day. So I was talking uh, a week or two ago about my endeavoring to collect every card ever created by a man named Tony Barron. This is my little pack of Tony Barron cards. There are 17, te actually technically there are 16 unique Tony Barron cards in existence. Uh, he didn't play that long, played one season for the Phillies, one game for the Expos, and that was it. Had uh, 16 total cards, most minor leaguers. So I'm trying to get him because he was a great fan favorite in 97 when he played with the Phils. This one I just picked up. Now, I couldn't find this. This is when he was with the uh, Phillies minor league team. The, uh, what is it? The, uh, the Lakewood Blue Claw Claws, which is like a rookie league uh, for the Phillies out in Lakewood, New Jersey, out on the coast. He was the hitting coach for them this year. What year is this even? 2003 by that time. I'm, I have no idea what Tony's doing today. I really don't. But he was a fan favorite in 97 when he was there. And uh, this was one I hadn't had, but it came, it's funny, it came in a lot of four cards, all of which I, you know, other than this one, the other three I did have. What was fantastic about my luck, though, is those three cards, yes, I already had, but they were all, the ones I already possessed were all autographed. So I actually swapped out the autographed versions and put them in the stop loaders to have separately and put the other ones in this little case I have with all my Tony Barron cards. So you'll see all these all those other ones right here. Those other three that were autographed, now I have non-autographed versions. And I don't need the, the autographed versions to be part of my set so I can keep them separately. Kind of cool, I thought. Uh, just my luck that everything worked out perfectly. Now, theoretically, I only need two more Tony Baron cards, uh, but there are, there is a variation listed for his uh, collector's choice version. His 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 lone major league card came in 1998 collector's choice. Uh, there's a variation regarding the hologram on the back. So, for example, this one has a home plate shaped hologram there supposedly exists a diamond shaped hologram on the back rather than the uh, home plate variation i will endeavor to try and find that along with 
the other two that I don't even have a single version of. So I only need three more cards to have every Tony Baron card. And I got, got three extra autograph versions as well. There you have it. All right, today's trivia question, sticking with all-star game themes. Which pitcher was the first to tow the rubber in all-star game competition? Who, so who was on the mound first as an all-star game pitcher? That is your question. You are playing for, again, as always, two cards from the 2003 Topps Gallery Hall of Fame edition. These are two great pitchers for the old Oakland Athletics teams of the mid-70s. Catfish Hunter and Raleigh Fingers. That's what you're playing for. Uh, you can win those if you email me the correct answer. I will include my email in the description below along with a repeat of that question. You will have today and tomorrow to answer. We'll pick a winner on Sunday, all right? Good luck to everybody on that one. Today... Sticking with the goals theme. Again, I'm going over my goals for 2024. It's the halfway mark of 2024 approximately. So I'm just giving you an update. Now, I have here, I'm going to pull it out so you can see it. This is my set of 2000, not 2000. These are my tops. Anyway, not even tops. This is the PSA set registry by all time great Phillies. Now, I told the story, if you look back to the first video, one of the first videos I made this year was my setting of the goals for this coming year. And I mentioned at the time that the PSA set registry was 34 cards for the all-time Phillies great, and I had 26. So I started the year needing eight more to finish it. And lo and behold, PSA, probably with the lobbying of somebody who felt it was important, was able to add nine additional names to that list of 34. So, um, 34, yeah. So now, the all-time great Phillies PSA set registry is 43 cards. And I was only eight away, which meant I was then 17 away. So I'm going to push myself. I, I was hoping to finish it this year because all I needed were eight. So I'm going to have to push that back a year. I'm not going to be able to buy all 17 this year. Some of them are uh, fairly pricey. I got most of the big ones now. I did get my Pete Rose rookie card, which was a big one. I did get my Dick Allen rookie card, which was a big one. Um, so, um, I'm not going to show them off, but what I am going to do is show off something interesting that goes along with it. So, I, I, again, there are 43 cards in the set. My goal was to get eight. Uh, at the time, I thought there were 34, and I needed 26. I had that 26. I needed eight more to complete the set. Well, now my goal, because there were seven, suddenly 17, was simply to get at least half, eight or nine. I've gotten nine. I'm not going to show off those. I've been showing them off as I've acquired them. But in addition to the 43 players on the list, I've also begun accumulating other cards of Philly's greats. Now, um, I love watching John Mangini's channel. He talks about um, getting one... Uh, version of every card set ever made, uh, which is a noble goal. I love Mike O's channel. Mike O, if you know Mike O, put together uh, an all-time Phillies tops set. So he has the base set of tops, flagship tops every year since 51. He's got all the Phillies that were produced in those base sets, not the inserts, the parallels, or anything ridiculous, not any higher premium parallel or whatever brand, just the base tops. That's something he has done. What I decided to do was to try and acquire um, great fillies of the past in random sets. So, and plus I'm also collecting additional cards of legendary fillies that I think might make it into the PSA set register of all time fillies eventually. So let me start with that. So I recently picked up, this is a brand new card to me. I just got this in uh, recently. 1987 Topps Jamie Moyer rookie card. But this picked this up in a PSA 10. I don't want to state with certainty that Jamie Moyer is deserving of being an all-time great Philly. He only played for like four years, four seasons with the Phillies. But you never know. And, you know, he is still beloved in this town because he's from here, and he won the World Series with us in 08. So, 
Uh, I've been looking to get one of these for a while. I have one I was going to get slabbed up, but I decided to like, this one came on the bay and it was like all in, it's like less than 50 bucks. So I snagged this one instead. I might get the other one slabbed up just for fun, but this is my Jamie Moyer rookie card, which fits along perfectly in that set of all time great Phillies. Another one I recently picked up, I showed this one off recently. This is not, in my mind, a Jack Morris rookie card. Now, of course, it is a Jack Morris rookie card, which makes it, you know, somewhat valuable. But the other three players are of little known, little note to anybody, except in Philadelphia. That is Mr. Larry Anderson, one of the all-time greats of the 1993 Phillies and a current broadcaster for the Phillies. That is his rookie card. So I look at this card and I see a Larry Anderson rookie card who also someday may crack the all-time Philly great set. Now, the other ones are all-time, I wouldn't, well, one of them I'm going to call an all-time great, but I sound, found a, a, a way to get this card. I got this one at a Heritage auction earlier this year. I showed it off when I got it. Paid an absurd amount of money. I didn't break, I have not yet broken the $1,000 mark on any card purchase. I haven't done it. Uh, but I came close. Uh, this one, uh, I was in at a heritage auction and I put in a bid, which I thought would easily be passed over for this card because of what it is and who it is. But it, it didn't. I won this card. 1913, the Tom Barker game, Rover Cleveland Alexander in a PSA 8. A PSA 8 card from 1918. 1913. There you go. And Grover Cleveland Alexander, obviously an all-time great Philly. So I got another playing era card of an all-time great Philly. Then I also, in order to get, uh, I was looking for inexpensive cards of all the great classic sets. One of them being the T205. And at the Philly show last year, I guess it was actually probably this year, early in March, I picked this one up. PSA, SGC2, the 1911 T205 John Titus. Now, people who remember Richie Ashburn broadcasting for the Phillies would often, he would also talk about this guy because his name, they called him John Tight Pants Titus. I don't know why. Never really looked it up. I have seen many images of him from the turn of the century with a big, bushy mustache. Here he does not have a mustachioed look to him, but here he is. This is the uh, back, and it is an SGC2 of John Tight Pants Titus of the Phillies. This is my T205 uh, version of a Phillies card. And then lastly, I just showed this off last week. The awesome old judge card I picked up of Ed Daly, pitcher of the Philadelphia Phillies, back in 1887. So those are five cards I wanted to show off that go along with my set, my PSA set registry, all-time great Phillies. Even though none of these are on that registry, they still, in my mind, are technically all-time great Phillies. And again, they provide me with the opportunity to add to my collection of cards of Philadelphia Phillies players spanning some of the greater, greatest card sets of all time. And I think you can, it's hard to argue that uh, the T205 and the old judge are not some of the greatest card sets of all time. And here I have examples of Phillies players from those sets similar to my Gowdy and some of the other greats that I have in there. So, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please consider to like, subscribing, commenting, and all that jazz. I really do appreciate your support as I try my best for everybody else in this great card community. All right. Thank you for watching. Have a great week. We'll see. Hopefully, we can see you again on on Friday. Uh, Friday is the last video for this week that I'll be doing again. I always do videos on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then Sunday is our trivia recap. So. Uh, we have done Monday and Wednesday. We'll do Friday. Another great trivia and prizes to give away. So come back for that. All right. Uh, appreciate everybody watching. I hope you all had and are having a great week. And I will see you on Sunday for the recap. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care.